Once a gal was screamy Dobie. Once a gal to call it his own. Is she blonde? Is she tall? Is she dark? Is she small? Is she any kind of dreamboat at all? No matter. It's hers and hers alone. Dobie. I'm taking Latin in school, and I can tell you why the Roman Empire declined and fell. It's because it takes all day to say anything in Latin. I mean, if your, your house is on fire, or Attila the Hun is at the gates, and you've got to stop and think of tenses, cases, and conjugations before you can call for help, brother, you're dead. <laughs> but in their slow way, the Romans used to get off a good one every now and then. Take this guy Tacitus, for instance. He said, uh, Amico firmo nihil, ami milius potest. This means nothing can be purchased which is better than a firm friend. Now that's a fact. You take my buddy Maynard Krebs. There now is a firm friend. Maynard will do anything for me. Sometimes I wish he wouldn't. <laughs> hey, Big Daddy. Hello. I want to ask you a question. All day long? And it may take all day. Okay, good buddy. What's up? Tell me something, Maynard. I've been sitting here three and a half hours waiting for Thalia Menninger. Did you give her the note? Sure. What'd she say? She said, I don't like remember. Look, Maynard, concentrate. I gave you a note yesterday to deliver to Thalia. Remember? Sure. It's right here. <laughs> Maynard, if the note's in your pocket, then you didn't give it to failure, did you? Good thinking. <laughs> Maynard. So what do we do today, man? We'll do nothing today, or tomorrow or the next day, Maynard. You sore, dope? No, 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 I'm not sore, Maynard. It, it's just that I need a little vacation from you. Look, go somewhere, please, Maynard. I, I love you, but you're driving me ape. I gotta have some time off. Oh. Where'll I go? Why don't you go to the record store and listen to some jazz? Hey, cool, Pops. Like no, Daddy-o. Like what, Riff? Like don't come in the store. Like why? Look, Maynard, I like like you. You know that. Like thanks. Yeah, but like you can't hang here no more. I mean, take your business like elsewhere, you dig? What I like do. Maynard, I sell like new records. But when you two playing them records like two, three hundred times, man, I'm like in the second hand business. It's piercing. I mean, you're like something else, man. You're cool and you're hip and you dig and like that, but man, I got like a wife and kid to support. I hate to lower the boom on you, Dad, but it's a definite split. I mean, don't come back no more. That's like rough, Riff. What can I like do, Maynard? I mean, I took a look at that Diz album when you got through with it the other day, and there were no grooves left on it at all. It was a full smooth. Be a pal, Maynard. Flake off, huh? Where'll I like go? Like school? Yeah. I guess I can. I'll be like seeing you. Maynard. No. Like, please. <laughs> he managed to arrive at a frank and even noble eloquence, a plain but persuasive power. Class dismissed. Now, Dope, now? No, Maynard. Not yet. Maynard. Here, yeah, Big Daddy? I mean, yes, sir. That's better. Maynard, I've been wanting to talk to you about this examination paper. Yeah, it figures. The question, if you will recall, was what, in your opinion, is the most moving lyric ever written? Maynard, there is, of course, room for a wide variety of opinion, but... When the saints go marching in? The greatest. Oh, when 
the saints go marching main guns. I've thought long and hard about your case, Maynard, and I must confess myself completely baffled. You want me to stay after school? Heaven forfend. I got nothing else to do. Find something. Like what? Like Charlie Wong's ice cream parlor. Isn't that where your colleagues foregather of an afternoon? Yeah, good thinking, man. Thank you. <laughs> Don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Don't fence, Don't fence me, me in. in. Oh, how square Let can you get? <laughs> Have I told you? Ain't you got a soul, man? This is the coolest, real progressive. I know it's real progressive. I'll play some more, huh? No more. <laughs> How come? Because when you play, nobody sings. And when they don't sing, they don't get thirsty. When they don't get thirsty, they don't order malts and sodas. And when they don't order malts and sodas, Charlie Wong is out of business. Oh, I'm like disappointed, Charlie. I'm like all 40% since you started coming in here. You don't <laughs> dig me. Maynard. I dig you the most, but go. Go like where? Go like home. You do live someplace, don't you? Yeah. like moaning. Oh. Maynard, honey, why don't you go outside and play? Hmm? Go outside and play? Mom, I'm like a grown man. I've got a beard. Please go, dear. <laughs> How come? You know, dear, your father loves you very much. Yeah. And I love him. And you too, Mom. I mean, it's like togetherness. As I was saying, your father loves you very much. But for a while, just for a little while, he doesn't want to look at you. You don't dig. Try to dig, dear, but dig outside. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> if I've done anything like wrong, please tell me about it. I mean, how am I going to learn otherwise? He has a point, dear. Very well. Maynard, I have here a bill from the telephone company. Now, do you remember of making a telephone call on Saturday the 18th? I don't know, Dad. I make lots of calls. <laughs> I've got to give you that. But this happens to be a special telephone call, Maynard. It, it's long distance. Come on, think, son. Think. Yeah, I got it. I called Diz. Aha, Diz who? Dizzy Gillespie. There ain't no others, man. I don't know. <laughs> Would you mind telling me why you called Dizzy Gillespie? Oh, I had to, Dad. I mean, when I heard that new album, I flipped like my whole skull. Well, I should play it for you? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's the most. I mean, when a man plays like that, you just gotta tell him. I mean, if somebody gave you a ball like this gives me, why let him know about it, wouldn't you? Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not nice if you don't, true? No, no, true, true. But tell me, why did you talk to him so long? It wasn't so long. In fact, it was pretty short, like 10 seconds. He hung up on me. I think it was sore because I woke him. What time did you call him? Seven o'clock. In the morning? No, at night. And he was still asleep? Well, it wasn't 7 o'clock at night there. Where? Where this was playing. Copenhagen. <laughs> oh. Maynard, honey, $28. Alice, please. Yeah, I know it's a little steep, but just let me play the record for you. Alice, if you love me, you'll get... You... Won't please. you go outside like a good boy? Good boy? I'm no good. Not to my family, not to my friends, not like to anybody. Oh, no, son, no. No, you are a good boy. You're a fine boy. A little mixed up, perhaps, but you are a fine boy. But you must understand, Maynard, there, there are times when even those who love you the most just have to get rid of you for a little while. <laughs> Nobody wants me. Oh. oh, we want you, dear. Hey, a letter for me. Well, I better read it. Maynard, honey... 
By all means, dear, read it. But read it outside. <laughs> hey, Dad, can I have a car? <laughs> okay, Dad, I'll go. Hey, Doby. No, not yet, Maynard. Let's give it a few more weeks, huh, buddy? It's all right, Doby. I just wanted to say goodbye. Goodbye? Goodbye. <laughs> Maynard, where are you going? Been a good thing, too. I'm no use to anybody. Where are you going? Maybe they'll make a man of me. It's possible. Maynard, concentrate. Where are you going? The Army. I've just been drafted. Well, how can you be drafted? You're 17 years old. No, Dobe. I'm like 18. But you're in my class at school. I flunk quite a lot, though. <laughs> Gee, that's tough, getting drafted. Could be the best thing ever happened to me. Maybe, but it's still tough. Especially on your mother and father. I bet they'll be all broken up. I don't know, Dobe. My father's head of the draft board. <laughs> I don't mind telling you I am low. I mean, Maynard's news hit me like a blunt instrument. I, I just can't seem to snap out of it. It's not only Maynard I'm worried about it, it's the Army, too. <laughs> the whole thing. Very depressing. Doby. Doby? Mr. Gillis? Yes, sir? You seem more distant today than usual. You feel all right? Yes, sir. In that case, do you think you could open your book to page 386? Yes, sir. Today we are going to discuss a modern trend in literature, the trend toward concise writing. On today's swift-moving society, concise writing has become more and more important. People simply don't have time to read long, leisurely stories and articles. They want their information condensed, compressed, concise. Take, for example, the success of magazines like uh, the Reader's Digest or TV Guide. They reflect the national desire for information in a concise form. So, for your next assignment in composition, I want you to write me a concise essay. No more than 100 words. The topic will be the most interesting character of the 18th century. Keep your sentences brief, pack them with facts, and make every word count. Dobie. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, sir. Are you quite sure? No, sir. No, I'm not all right. I I'm miserable. I I've never been so miserable in my whole miserable life. May one ask why? Yeah, I'll tell you why. I'm losing the best friend a man ever had. Maynard's been drafted. <laughs> My soul. <clears throat> you know, I find myself strangely saddened by this news. Bless my soul. Well, Maynard, I shall miss you. Me? May come as a shock to you. Does to me. <laughs> as a fact, I shall miss you. Indeed, we all shall. A thought has just occurred to me. An inspiration, you might call it. Now, I just assigned you a composition of 100 words on the most interesting character of the 18th century. I want to change that assignment. Instead, I want each and every one of you to bring me tomorrow a 100-word essay on the subject, What Maynard Krebs Means to Me. <laughs> me too? <laughs> no, Maynard, you're excused. Testimonial. That's what we had for Maynard, a testimonial. So many people came around with essays that the classroom wasn't big enough to hold everybody. So Mr. Pomfret, you know, he's a pretty good Joe underneath it all. Yeah. Mr. Pomfret called off class that day, and instead we all went over to Charlie Wong's ice cream parlor, and that's where we had our testimonial that night. <laughs> Uh, lots of people think Maynard dresses pretty bad. As a matter of fact, I'm one of those people. 
But it's not the clothes that count. It's the heart that beats beneath those clothes. And I want to tell you that underneath that cruddy sweatshirt beats one of the largest hearts of our generation. To me, there are only two really great hearts in the world today. Maynard Krebs and Albert Schweitzer. Hey. Hey. Now a word for Mr. Ryan. Hey. I want to blow like a tribute to a swinging cat. <laughs> Maynard Krebs. Maynard is like with it. I mean, jazz. Lots of cats think they're with jazz, but they're like wrong. I mean, if you're with jazz, you can't be with nothing else. And Maynard ain't with nothing else. <laughs> he swings. He is way out. He's cool. He digs this. He's a great American. Like, thank you. <laughs> like, thank you, Mr. Ryan. And now, a word for Mr. Wong. There's an old Chinese proverb I just made up which says, when Maynard goes out the door, joy goes out the window. It's true. I've thrown Maynard out of my place many times. But right now, all I wish is he comes back soon so I can start throwing him out again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong. It's only fitting that Maynard's best friend, Dobie Gillis, should wind up these proceedings, but before Dobie speaks, uh, I should like to read my little essay on Maynard. <clears throat> my years of teaching, I have seen countless students come and go. Today, when I think back on their faces, they tend to blur and run together. But Maynard's, I feel certain, will always remain distinct in my memory. There's never been another like him, there never will be. For this, I am, of course, grateful, but still in all, it has been a privilege to know this curious, shabby, education-proof, and somehow gallant young man. And now, Dobie Gillis. I don't know what kind of mark Mr. Pomfret is going to give me on this essay. I'm afraid it is... I'm afraid it isn't very concise. You see, I go back a long way with Maynard. We've been buddies ever since we were little tiny babies. In fact, we learned to walk together. Funny thing about Maynard, first he learned to walk and then he learned to crawl. <laughs> that thing's kind of backwards sometimes. Anyhow... We go back a long way, Maynard and me. We were always together ever since the beginning. I remember one summer when we were kids, we sold bluing door to door and won a pony. The next summer, we sold the pony door to door. <laughs> In all the time we've been with each other, we've had our differences, of course, but I've never, not once, been sore at Maynard. I mean, who could be sore at a sweet, good, kind human being like that? Sure, he's a little bit weird. And in fact, he's quite a lot weird. But he's good, and he's true, and he's loyal, and he's generous, and he's trustworthy, and there's not one mean bone in that whole funny-looking body. I'm going to miss that kook. Life will not be the same. Well, I better stop now before I get too misty and make the presentation. Hey. All of us got together and chipped in for a couple of going-away gifts. I take great pleasure in presenting to you this lightweight, weather-resistant two-suit bag and this uh, shock-proof, waterproof, solid steel watch with a sweep second hand. Thank you, Dobie. Uh, friends, fellow classmates, Mr. Pomfret. I don't like know what to say. <laughs> Krebs, Maynard G, reporting for duty. <laughs> Krebs, who? Maynard G, reporting for duty, sir. What duty? I'm in the army, Big Daddy. You drafted me yesterday. I've got no Krebs here. Must be some kind of snap food, Pops. I got my orders yesterday. Let me see. I got news for you, Krebs, Maynard G. This is no induction notice. It's just a classification. 
I don't dig. You've just been classified, that's all, like all 18-year-old kids do. It could be six months before you're drafted. Maybe a year, maybe two, maybe never. Oh, this is terrible. I gotta go now. Why? Because all my friends got together and gave me like a testimonial. I mean, they all said how much they loved me and like that. And they gave me this bag. And this watch. Solid steel with a sweep second hand. I gotta go. I'm follow you, Maynard G. If your friends all love you so much, why don't you stay with them? Oh, you don't understand, Pops. They don't especially love me when I'm around. Only when I'm, like, leaving. You just have to put up with you, Maynard G. You're not being drafted today. Please, please, you gotta take me, Corporal. Corporal? Colonel? That's closer. I'm a captain. Please, Captain, take me right now. I'll enlist. I don't know. Please? What do your parents think about this? I don't know. I never asked them. You never asked them? Don't you think you ought to, Maynard G? Do I have to? You don't have to, but you ought to. Is that a way to treat your little careworn mother? Yeah, she is a little careworn. Then go on home and ask her. All right, man. But don't never let me go. Never. Mom, Dad, I know what a terrible blow this is to you, but you gotta do it for me. You just gotta. Uh, is there something I have to sign? <laughs> but look at it this way. The Army needs men. It's like my patriotic duty. Do we both sign, dear, or just your father? And I'll write you lots of letters, and I'll get passes and furloughs and like that. So it won't be like we'll never see each other. You know, if you hurry, you could get back before the recruit. Yeah, and I got like another idea. Why don't you get my cousin Jerome to come and live with you? I mean, he's like an orphan, and he could stay in my room. So we'll... So you'll be, like, so lonesome. Look, it's almost four o'clock, Maynard. Why don't you take the car? You Man, it'll be good for me. I mean, the Army builds men, and I could earn, like, a trade and travel and round out my personality. And when I come home to you, I'll be a much better person. Oh, please, Dad. Please, Mom. Won't you give me your consent? Oh, yes, dear. Son, you've talked us into it. Oh, thank you. You're like real human beings. Raise your right hand. Your right hand? Oh. Repeat after me. I, Maynard G. Krebs. I, Maynard G. Krebs. How do you do? I'm Major Bradbury. Major, I'm Dobie Gillis. Who do you want to see? Well, I came to visit Maynard Krebs. He said it'd be all right after he finished his basic training. Ah, oh, yes. Krebs, Maynard yeah. G. Splendid soldier, splendid. Maynard G. Krebs? Yes, we made him an acting corporal, you know. Maynard G. Krebs? Yes, he's got the best squad in the outfit. Look over there, you'll see him about to uh, drill a squad now. And they've made him an acting corporal already. They have? Yeah, and he's real happy. I talked to him a long time afterwards. He misses you, of course, but he's real happy. <laughs> I miss him, too. And so do I. Yeah, we all miss him. Gee, wouldn't it be great to hear that crazy beat again, that, that knocked-out rhythm? Uh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, Big Daddy. Where'd you come from? Up the river from New Orleans, like jazz, jazz, jazz. Uh -huh. oh, my name's Dobie Gillis. What's yours? Jerome. Jerome what? Krebs. Krebs? You mean... cousin. Oh. oh. Well, welcome to our city. Cool, Dad. Oh,
Once a gal is dreamy, Doby. Once a gal is creamy, Doby. Once a gal to call is old. Is she blonde? Is she tall? Is she dark? Is she small? Is she any kind of dream one at all? No matter, he's hers and hers.